A lot of times people will hop on their bike just unaware of how it should feel and how it should fit. If you're comfortable on the bike, odds are you're gonna ride more. If you're uncomfortable on the bike, then all of a sudden your bike turns into a clothing rack inside your house that never gets used for, for exercise. <laughs> Ooh, that hits so close to home. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Elena Chung and I'm super excited today my friend Scott McClave is joining us. Okay Scott, tell us what we're doing today. So today we're going to be taking you through a bike fit and then we're going to be looking at form and technique while you're on the bike. If that union between body and bike is off because of a poor fit or poor form, it's going to be the body that ultimately loses. So what is a bike fit and who would benefit from it? So a bike fit is a process of looking at somebody on a bike and making adjustments to their bike such that their bike matches the needs of their body. A lot of times when we think of bike fitting, uh, we think that it's only for experienced cyclists and racers, but a lot of times with the newer cyclists, uh, they may not know what a proper setup feels like. So walking through a process that helps them get the most out of their bike is gonna be very beneficial. Where would I go to get a bike fit? Ideally you'd come to me because I'm a physical therapist that's you know all, about all things bike. Uh, but there's a lot of places that we can go for bike fits. Bike shops are a great place to start. Uh, if we're having a, a cycling related injury, I would really strongly advise finding a physical therapist that has a background in bike fitting. So let's have you hop on the bike. Awesome. I practiced this before we were filming, so I'm <laughs> going to be a regular. First try. If you're new to clipless pedals, you want to toe in, click down with the heel. I would recommend that your bike shop set it up so the pedal's in your loosest setting. That's gonna make getting in and out of your bike a little bit easier, a little bit safer. Let's have you start pedaling. Bike fitting process, it's, it's a bit interactive, so we're just gonna have a conversation and you're gonna tell me how the bike feels and we're gonna figure out ways to make it better. What are some thoughts that comes to mind with how the bike is interacting with your body? Um, I feel like my legs are not moving as much as they ought to be. My back feels a little bit uncomfortable already. My wrists feel a little bit of pressure. Okay. And also my butt hurts. <laughs> so kind of all the contact points feel a little off. Yes, exactly. So we're gonna walk through a series of adjustments. Cool. Starting down at your feet. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna work our way up to, up to your saddle and then we're gonna work our way out to your bars. I see some really common things in how your bike is currently set up right now that are gonna be contributing to some of the aches and pains that you're feeling. So by the time we're done here, you should be happy on the bike and ready to roll down the street. Cool. All right, let's have you hop off and let me uh, take a look at your shoes. And some of the things I'm seeing on the bike that are contributing to some of Elena's uh, aches and pains are, one, her saddle is really aggressively downwardly tilted. A lot of times people will do that to avoid the saddle contacting soft tissue, but it doesn't provide us with a lot of support. The other thing I see is her bars are aggressively upwardly rotated. A lot of times people will do that to try to make the handlebars closer, but it tends to compromise neck and wrist posture. And let's take a look at her shoes here. All right, so I'm seeing, seeing a couple things going on here. Do those look symmetrical to you or do they look pretty asymmetrical? They look very asymmetrical. Yes, and if we look at those cleats there, one's a little mal-rotated. Maybe it was adjusted correctly when you first got your shoes, but maybe it wasn't all the way tight. And when you rotate out to unclip, maybe it wiggled with it. That's probably what happened. If we have one cleat that's, that's mal-rotated, um, the most likely, likely thing that's gonna be impacted by that is probably gonna be the knee. The average cyclist is doing anywhere from 80 to 90 pedal strokes a minute. That could be an overuse injury waiting to happen. The other thing I noticed when, uh, when we were on the bike um, was where our shoe was contacting relative to the pedal was, was a little off. You were tending to pedal off the front of your, of your tiptoes. So first thing that we're gonna do is just gonna bring our cleats into a neutrally rotated position and bring them back a little bit so we get the ball of your foot um, just in front of the pedal spindle. So where is the ideal position for my foot on the pedal? So from a, there's a couple planes of motion that we want to take into consideration. There's, there's our fore aft and then our medial lateral, our left and our right. What we're looking for is we're looking for the ball of your foot to be just in front of the pedal spindle. If we were to come here at about the three o'clock position, your foot was magically inside that shoe, mm -hmm. <laughs> what we would be seeing would be the ball of your foot would be roughly here, your pinky toe, ball of your pinky toe would be over here. And we're gonna be seeing that pedal spindle kind of go in between those two points. How we look at our medial lateral orientation is gonna be dictated by what I'm looking at from the front of your body on the bike. Now, what I'm trying to address is I don't want a width of stance 
that's too wide. I want my I want my knees and my feet, my hips to line up and stack nicely. One thing that we did on your cleats is we brought them more to the outside of the shoe to give you a narrower width of stance. This is a really common thing that, that we tend to do on, on smaller, leaner riders. Get you on there. The other thing I want to address as you're putting those shoes on is I want to I want to level out your saddle. Right now, this is significantly downwardly tilted, and that's going to be causing you to put a lot of weight into your hands, which you mentioned earlier. So as you're doing that, I'm going to take care of this. A lot of times people will downwardly rotate their saddles to try to get the saddle away from their soft tissue, and it almost does the opposite in ways. They'll be sliding forward on the saddle, and then the nose of the saddle is then pressing up into their soft tissue. But where we should feel you know, support from our saddle is, is, through, is through our sit bones. Like on a, on a bike like this, where you're gonna be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more lean forward, we're gonna opt for a little bit narrower saddle. If we were putting you on a beach cruiser bike, you're gonna be on a wider seat just based off of the part of your pelvis that's sitting on the saddle. Try this out, let's see, let's see where we're at. And uh, turn some pedal strokes, see how it feels. Oh, yeah, it already feels better. Yeah, previously your cleats were really far forward on your shoe. Mm. That's gonna make the distance from uh, your saddle to your pedals smaller. It's gonna make you feel like you're riding a low saddle height. Yeah. By us bringing your cleats back on the shoe, we effectively just raised your saddle height without having to make an adjustment to your seat post. We're gonna take a quick little measurement and just see if we're in a reasonable zone. And I like the way we're looking from a front, front uh, fore aft perspective on your legs. Your legs are lining up nicely straight down. Your hip, knee, and foot are all stacked nicely on top of each other so we don't have to worry about a medial lateral cleat adjustment anymore. Cool. I'm gonna position your foot how it was similar to when you were pedaling. And then we're gonna take our goni and bring that on there. And I'm happy with what that cleat adjustment and what that saddle adjustment just did for us. Cool. Um, how do your hands feel? They still feel pretty weighted, mm -hmm. I would say. How does your neck feel? Oh, a little grumpy. A little grumpy? Yeah, especially kind of like this upper trap area. Yeah, so you can actually stay on the bike if you'd okay. like. So yeah, go I'm ahead. clipped in, don't want to waste, waste right. all that time <laughs> with clipping and unclipping. We'll so, be here for days. We'll go ahead and lower this guy down a bit. So I'm guessing what we, we're doing next is gonna take the pressure off my wrists. That would be my hope. <laughs> so what we're looking for here is, is I want a nice, smooth transition off the bar. That gives you the ability to make use of this space on the bar. It gives you a lot of real estate. The other thing that it also does is it makes your drops far more usable. If the bars are rolled up aggressively, we can't access the drops very well, and it makes it really hard to use our brake levers from the drops. If you're going on a really long ride, it's important to change your hand position every so often just to adapt your posture. It's kind of like if you're working behind your computer all day, it's nice to take a little standing break or maybe transition from a sitting desk to a standing desk, that sort of thing. Even that little bit of variability can be helpful. Totally. Yeah, yeah. The bodies are meant to stay in motion. That's right. <laughs> all right. And how's that feel? Better already. Should I start pedaling? Yeah. Should I like, Go do for the it. whole yeah. thing? Okay. Do, do, the whole, <laughs> do the whole jazz. Okay. Um, when you reach your brake levers, are they easy to pull or do they feel pretty far away from you? They definitely feel far away. Yeah. What yeah. if you go down into the drops? Get, get real low and aggressive. Now try to reach out there. I can't. I got little stubby fingers. Yeah. So <laughs> let's change that. Those modern road and gravel bikes have a lever reach adjustment. With that, we can custom tailor uh, to fit a wide variety of hand sizes. For riders with smaller paws, it's like, mm -hmm. it's the little magic adjustment. It's nice to know that we also deserve to be able to stop. Exactly. Just as much as people with big hands. Just <laughs> try that out. Okay. Wow. Much easier, right? Yeah, definitely. And and then, it's like they're right there. Yeah, and then it's like I can your reach fingers them. there. <laughs> yeah, it's like I could break if I wanted to. That's so, cool. So when you're bombing down a hill, like let's say <laughs> that you might be down here on the drops just to have a bit of a firmer grip on your right. handlebars, like if, if the road was bumpy or whatnot. Mm. Now, brakes are easy to reach. You have tons of great all control. Right. So that's, that's looking much better. Yeah, how are, you, how are you feeling about all your contact points now? So much better. Yeah. My butt doesn't hurt even a little bit awesome. anymore. Awesome. <laughs> we're gonna do, we're gonna do one, one little adjustment. I see here in this position, we're, we're a little arched here in the low back. So I normally wouldn't do this to a newer cyclist, but just based off of your mobility, I think we can, I think you might be a little bit comfortable with the bars just a teeny bit lower. Okay. Would you still recommend one of those spandex 
butt diaper pads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> short, short story, yes. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. I mean, there's just no way to look cool when you're wearing one off of the bike. No, it's like, don't, don't try to go to the bar in one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that before? Be honest. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try that out. Yeah, this definitely feels so much better than, yeah. than when we started. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you look way more dialed and you know, fundamentally I'd say, you know, give that a shot and, and see how it goes. Okay, so now that my bike is fit to me, how am I supposed to fit on my bike? All right, so <laughs> I'll walk you through a couple common errors that I tend to see out on the trails. Um, one is where our knee is positioned relative to our foot from an inboard outboard perspective. Mm -hmm. Imagine you had a laser beam coming off the front of your knee, coming out towards me, and a laser beam coming off the front of your toe, coming out towards me. If you were to be looking down at those two beams, stack those beams on top of one another. So we're just keeping the, the thigh in line with our foot as we're pedaling. Um, other things that we're seeing from a posture perspective right now is I know you're a little relaxed on the bike. Let's take your low back and just bring it up towards the ceiling a little bit more. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead, take your elbows, they're kind of locked out. Let's bend those a little bit, make those soft. And let's take your wrist and make it a bit more neutral. Now I want you to just uh, make your neck nice and long and just softer elbows again. Perfect. Take a couple big breaths in and out and it should feel like your body's a bit more active, like if you're in a plank position. We're not saying generate a bunch of tension throughout our torso, but just some, some uh, background engagement. Cool, oh, that's but awesome. That looks, that looks so much better. Does that feel a bit more comfortable? It feels a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it takes all the contact points and it allows your body to, to blend and form a nice, nice union with the bike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You bet. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Elena Chung, and also big thanks to my friend Scott McClay for being on the show with me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, sharing your amazing wisdom. If you liked this episode, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, let us know what you liked, what you wanna see more of in the future, and also let us know what your next big biking adventure is, and we'll see you again real soon. High five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>